So now this record is now going to go further into the structure actually. Right. If you go there, click on share. Sir, this do we need to account. deploy it again? No, no need to deploy. Deployment is only for chart of accounts. Isn't it? Okay. No, no, no need to deploy. So we are now completed the ledger, COA, legal LD, and then completed the basic financial uh, information. Also. Now we are going to go and then create our next unit. This is, unit. This is the top entity for a supply chain. Actually. <clears throat> supply chain will now communicate up to business unit. And so beyond which it will not go at all. So these are all financial entities. And now we are now beginning our activity on the supply chain front, actually. Business. It also does a lot of activity in financials also. Right? But from a supply chain perspective, this is our top entity. Right? So we are now going to create a business unit. We'll not go that way. So go there. We'll now go on then. The 25th step is what? We are going to create a business unit now. Take copy of it, and then we'll now go there. And then we'll now create it. So it has ended up in error, it doesn't matter, leave it. We'll now come back to the original tab region and go that one time. Okay? Now go that one time. And then here, we'll now go to this place again now. Fine, click on it. We'll now go to the what? Search now. Fine, click on search. And then we'll now place the business unit now. Manage business unit. <coughs> So click on the hyperlink of the business unit. I'm going to create it. So here, what happens? I will now click on plus. And then they have introduced a security actually. They have introduced a security. Fine. This is known as a reference data set. There are two types of securities are there. You're going to see the first security. Drop down. You're going to see the first security. And, drop down. and then click on create. So on the default set, what happens? I will not drop down and then I will not create a D DS. If I click on it, I'm not going to create the RDS actually. <clears throat> so the set name has to be capital. So I will not put everything as capital actually. Fine. K01 underscore RDS. So I'm not giving everything as capital. The set name has to be capital. So for easy understanding, what happens? I'm putting everything as capital. So click on it. It is a security actually. Thank you. I will tell you what exactly this. And then after having created our your drop down, and then I created a RDS, I know that I will not give the name. So I will not give the name. So K01 underscore <laughs> business unit. I am now creating a business. And then I'm going to say in which location is going to be K01. And then if you give a tab, so it's not coming. So if you add a drop down and choose now, click on drop down and then choose it. So click on search now. Fine. So if you give a tab, it is not coming. You have to drop down and then choose it now. Fine. The zeroth location I'm going to use it. This is going to be for a master org as well as my business unit. And that's it. The business unit is now created with the RDS. With the RDS. Any doubts? So, so Rana sir, what is, RDS is very much related to the data, how we are controlling the data uh, later. Uh, it is how we are controlling the access actually, not the data. The access okay. control. Roles. No, roles. not roles. It is access. I will not explain you what is the RDS. So I am not going to explain. Manager is optional. Right? You can put in manager. Otherwise, what happens? It is not a mandatory tool. Even the location is also optional. Actually. The manager is something like uh, the, the person who is sitting in this place and then managing all the teams, basically. The purchasing team, the sales team, the HR. Basically, team. the business units manager. Yeah, because. business units manager, actually. Very good. Who is this? Will it, will it involve anywhere in the workflow, this information? No, nowhere. Nowhere. This does not have any functionality. It's only for information purposes. Okay. So click on save and close in the right hand side top. By which my zero one location zero is the um, uh, organization master organization. Normally, I normally I associate the master logs location to a business unit because we are not going to do any transaction on this. Okay. You can do it. Let's say it is not situated in Calcutta, so we can put Calcutta as the location of the business unit. So whichever is there, you can do it. <clears throat> No, no, sir, it's not, not have any, any, it's not a mandatory, it's not having any prominence in our supply chain activities. Actually. No transactional impact on the location as well as in manager. Actually. So click on seven, it's only for information purposes. Fine. Click on seven, close the which whatever. The BU is now created. We'll now discuss about the RDS now. We are going to discuss about the RDS. What is RDS? The reference data set. It is basically an access control. Actually. Say, let's say you go and then swipe your credit card for, let's say, 100 rupees. It will ask you the four digit pin. Right? So if you go on and swipe your credit card for 50,000 rupees, right? then it will now send you a OTP also to your mobile. So apart from the four digit pin, it will now ask for additional security. So that what happens is they want to ensure that you are the guy who is really using it. So go there. So click on it. You will know what happens. You will now send the OTP also. So if you are going to swipe it for 5 lakh rupees, they, the third level of security also may come. Right? After having put the OTP, 
after having put the what about the four digit pin then it may ask you even your year of birth or something like that or your mother's name or something like that find something it will ask <coughs> so <coughs> these additional layers of security is to just to ensure you that nobody is misusing it similarly a saas model on the cloud what about it needs a security fine it is imperative it is a mandatory one that security is a must actually but even though we don't need it fine as a end user we don't need it but it has to be followed actually <coughs> and go to no so we will now have a look at the security of the saas model and go to no i know how go there i will now go to the oracle inventory documentation point go there so there is a document on rds <coughs> reference data set <coughs> reference this is the one so on the oracle scm training on the fusion inventory documentation we have a reference data set point double three so there are three objects which are basically rds specific actually there are three objects as far as supply chain is concerned what is what location location is having a what yeah, rds the department is having an rds the job is having an rds apart from that no other entity is having an rds fine they don't have any these three things need a security right let us say i am now creating bu on the north set and then i create two locations delhi also on the north set and then bhopal also on the north set BU, I am now creating an a south set actually. Now I made a RDS now. I am now making a south set. So I have got two locations: my Madras and Hyderabad on the BU. And then BU three is I am now going to create an a common set. And then it will be what happens? The Nagpur will be associated with the common set. Mm -hmm. Now, can anybody tell me BU one can access which which location? BU one can access which location? Anybody? Delhi Bhopal. Delhi Bhopal is partial partially correct. Delhi Bhopal Bhopal is partially correct. Then. Nagpur. Nagpur as well. Nagpur as well, because if you have any of them created on a common set, what happens? It can be accessed by any BUs. It is basically bypassing the security. Common set bypassing the security. Yeah, they were the common set, right? So common set bypasses the security actually. So if a BU belongs to common set, it can access all locations, whatever you have created. Every location can be created. So when compared to supply chain. we are not interested in the security at all but it will be enforced on right? just like whatever i have done it now fine i made a bu on a particular set so the hcm team or the finance team will be getting a bu so they will be invariably creating it on a bu on a, on a rds only so in that case what happens when you create your entity you create all your entities on common so that whatever if you create your location now i created three locations on a common set only so that my locations can be accessed by any bu irrespective of they belong to whichever set it is so supply chain team do not need the security at all so to bypass it what happens is they have given this common set in fact what happens is during audit also they will not have a look at it and then if you can justify it to the audit that the location is now made on a common set because we don't need the security they will accept whereas it is not the case as far as acharam is concerned let us say my manager is going to promote me but i cannot promote my manager my manager can increment give increment to me i cannot give increment he can sanction me i cannot sanction his leave so there are so many what i was access restrictions are available in hcms acharam so there it is very much required to go for a transaction it as it is a must in hcm transactions whereas data set has got no real meaning in supply chain at all say for example the bu1 i want to make a purchase order on south set on madras it is not possible at all because i belong to north set fine i cannot the 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 person who is now sitting on this place and trying to get a purchase order on madras is not possible for which what was the additional grant has to be given by the hcm team actually hcm team will not allow madras to be accessed by bu1 also <clears throat> likewise they will not do there are some bypassing is available fine not possible but there is again a, what happens too much of work actually so but if you create your entities <clears throat> on a common set you need not to worry at all people will be having a fancy for creating the location on a particular one and then one guy has created and then he has clubbed all the locations into a location set another thing also fine location set is there and then location what about the rds is there and then location set so many things you made and then he has land up in a problem sir 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 i am unable to access my location from another bu fine <laughs> what to do i don't know when i asked him to what about the learn it from hcm fully how to bypass it so when you are implementing it always create all the locations departments and jobs all the three our rds objects on a common set another way to specify don't go for rds thing because the real security has got no real meaning actually in our supply chain <clears throat> got it now 
Next is what? Then you, what is the difference between uh, enterprise set and uh, common set, Nana? Yeah, yeah. Common set is a good one. It's a good question. Common set is the one which is used by what happens at the SCMT. Enterprise set is the one which is used by the financials for bypassing this. So whenever they want to bypass some AP and AR and other projects modules and other things, they will now use the enterprise set. We are going to see this enterprise set while you are setting up the costing actually. We are going to set up the costing. So other end, what happens? We have a little bit of interest. So there are some payment terms is there. What happens? Uh, one payment term will not belong to one set, and then another payment term that we can even have multiple sets. Whereas in our case, it's not possible. If you create a location or department job, we can associate only one set here. Whereas in financials, a yeah, net fifteen can be belong to north and south set as well. It is again a big topic. Fine. They will not hear a lot on this audio. Fine, but again, don't enter into it now. Fine, it is, the security itself is not required at all <clears throat> for our supply chain. So create everything on common and then be live happy. Fine. But if it is created on some other thing and given to you, fine. If a CM is there, it, they will not allow you to create any of these things. They will only will create everything. Okay. So we'll now go to go to the next one. Fine. Assign business unit business function the one fine. Take over it. We'll now go there and then do it now. We are going to give what we want. And then put a task name fine. Assign business unit business function fine. Click on the hyperlink of it and then we are going to do it now. So here again, what happens is the task the scope of the task it is not accepting in this area at all, and because some other business unit is coming, and give a cancel. We have to go to the FSM area. So this is again a scope of the task. We cannot execute from the generic area. <coughs> Click on done, and then come on away. <coughs> come to the FSM area, drop it down, <coughs> choose the financials, and then make a query now. So these are the financial setups, and then go there. Assign business unit business function. Scope selection. Fine. Click on it. So we are going to do the scope selection first. Drop it down, and then go to select an eye, and then click on apply and go to task, and then we are going to select the scope. Now. So K zero one. Fine. Click on search. Now. Fine. Click on search. And then select it from the left hand side, and then go down. Fine. You keep your cursor on the left hand side, and then select the line, and then click on save and close. Now. Select it, and then click on save and close. Maybe which button you go inside. <coughs> Go there now. This enabling is basically modular in nature. At a later time, also we can enable. It. So we can go there. We are going to begin with the materials management. I will not put a tick mark. And then the payables invoicing. I will not put it. Fine. Payables payment. Fine. Procurement. Fine. And then I will not go for requisitioning and receiving. At a later time, also we can add it. Now. So this assigning the business function for a business unit is what happens. Modular in nature. At any point in time, we can come back here and then do it. Got it now. Fine. So I'm not sure. It's only Tuesday. Fine. We are now going to do mainly on middle management as well as we are going to push it into purchasing also. Fine. <clears throat> These things are not good for our training actually. So will it allow yeah. us to de de uh, uncheck this? Okay. Let's say that. Uh, a good question, but I know that it will allow you to check. But whether it will allow you to uncheck or not, I'm not aware of it now. <laughs> Since business unit has been used in other entities, so uh, uh, yeah, yeah. so it won't allow us to uh, uncheck. Maybe, that. maybe. Fine. If you already done procurement, it cannot even allow you to do it. Undo, undo it now. Fine. I know, but unloving is very much possible. At any point, we can keep on doing it. But un un undoing it, I don't know. In the primary, no, I, I don't think uh, it allows that because I mean, see the way uh, this whole uh, subscription mm -hmm. uh, model is set up. Uh, sub when I say uh, subscription, I mean I am speaking about a cloud subscription, right? So it doesn't uh, basically allows you to kind of like uncheck that uh you know like i mean after a certain amount of time Once when the transaction has started in the particular module yes. i think yes. it cannot allow you to uncheck right it may be correct actually yeah there are some yeah. commercial implications yeah, to yeah. That. okay so, you mean to say it's a license based so it won't allow us to exactly oh, okay okay got it in the primary letter i click on it and then i will now put k01 and then give a tap so when i give a tap sometimes it will come it is not coming and if it is not coming it drop down and then choose it Remember, our ledger and LE is already associated, and then the moment you choose the ledger, the LE will be coming automatically. Oh, yeah. I click on search, I click on search, and then I go there, select it, and then click on OK. Now, fine, by which it is not done. Fine, I done it. And then this tick mark is required for our costing. So we will now have a look at the <coughs> standard costing, average costing, the first in, first out costing, everything I would do. It. So this is a must. <coughs> I will now <coughs> explain this tick mark later on. When I am doing the costing, I will now explain. So that's it. So assign business unit business function is now complete with the required uh, functionality is enabled, and then we are now doing the what happens for this business unit. We are now saying which is our ledger, which is the early now. So in this place, 
you're not mentioning. So our BU is now getting linked to the ledger as well as AB. Right? BU is now getting linked to the ledger and AB. So for so secondary, for below legal entity, what? what I will explain what, what exactly is the below legal entity. Right? This is not, this is below this legal entity. It is not that below this legal entity. Right? It is a different meaning altogether. I will explain it during costing setup. When I am performing mm. the costing setup, I will not explain it. Yeah. Okay. So click on save and close now. Fine, click on save and close. By which, whatever you want. So assign BU, BU. And then it will now give you a big warning message. Now, right? So ignore the warning message. It doesn't matter. A big warning message. Click on it. So warning message, fine, click on OK. Ignore the warning message. No, no. Uh, like whenever you are doing these setups, I observe like uh, warning messages are coming. When yeah, you can to... ignore those warnings. Right? That is now giving you a generic warning. And then if you know deep into it, then you can even understand those warnings. So okay. if you know financials to a great extent, then you can even understand the warning. Because since I don't know financials, what happens, I am unable to understand the warning. But uh, generally what happens, you can ignore those warnings. It is giving you a general caution actually. Okay, that means something we are missing, right? That's makes. It's not a missing one, no. Fine. Uh, it is better to have. That is better. A better to, is, to, a, is it like a better to have? Oh, no. It is not missing. Is it better to have? Better to have is one thing, and second thing, I mean, generally, like I mean, uh, this would be an instance wherein there are multiple conflicting setups also. Maybe, maybe that. Yeah, that so could also. Uh, be giving there. you a warning that have you done yeah. this? Have you learned that like that? What happens? It's not asking you before doing this. Actually. At a higher level, you will now start to understand this warning now. So don't no. worry. So now we can ignore it. You gradually understand this warning. The message can go up now. You know what I mean? So now, what happens? We go there. So now, what happens? We will now come to this part a bit later. Now. The 27 stop is a must actually. I will now come to this a bit later. The 27 stop, I will now come to it. So this is again, we will be explaining it to you during procurement actually. So the 28th and 29th step, I will be explaining it during procurement. Now we jump directly into inventory. 27 step, you are going to do it, but not now, after some time. <coughs> 28th and 29th is a big topic, actually. <coughs> I'll be explaining it during procurement. Actually. In the inventory, we are not going to use it. So I'm not explaining this. So we jump into inventory now. Fine. Manage facility ships the one. So jump in inventory. So manage facility ships the one. So we'll now click on the task and then I go to the generic area of the task now. Fine. So this is the generic area. I'm not going to create my ship site. So fine. Click on the hyperlink of the ship. So the ship, you may have to create that many ships. Now fine. Click on plus. Now fine. I'm going to get only one ship for the exercise. I will now say K01. I will now say A ship. A, B, C. Like that. So take away. And then I click on the description. Now fine. Code is what? Is a three letter code. I'm now putting the, my, my prefixes as a code. Fine. I will now say it is going to start at 8 a.m. Otherwise, I will now say it is going to start at 6 a.m. And then space AM, 6 AM. The duration is for eight hours, actually. And then drop it down. This is part of Wagbe calendar setup. Exactly. Fine. Now, what happens? Uh, we, it will be used only in the planning module and not in the inventory module, actually. It is a part of Wagbe calendar setup. So, duration eight hours. And category is what? Work from home. Work from office. So, Anirban Naha will be using it to a great extent, actually. Whereas, inventory. It will not be bothered at all about this 8 hours or 12 hours or 24 hours. It will not bother. Whereas for him, planning is very, very sensitive for this. Planning is very sensitive. Ship, what happens? You make it as a none. -none. If it is a flexible, you need what happens? Yeah, what's called a flow manufacturing. And then a punch needs a labor management actually. And do not choose these things. Fine. Flow and labor is not there. Make it as none, none. So normally, supply chain will be having only none. Only for flow manufacturing and then labor management, you have to use the different one. And click on seven close by which what happens? My facility shift is created. So it has got a greater impact on the planning module and not on the inventory now. Whatever values you give is okay. So you have created a schedule as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. We go there. So after having done the facility shifts, we'll now go to the manage facility workday patterns. Workday patterns. We'll take over it. We'll now go to the task now. And then we'll now create our workday patterns. So click on the manage facility workday patterns. Thank you for going to wait now. So go there, click on plus one. We are going to create our workday pattern. So go there. I will now say K01 underscore work <coughs> day pattern. Is a workday pattern I'm going to create in you know, November. I will not take copy of it and the description. And then I I implemented order management some five years back at the time. What happens if we are having a problem? I put five days in a quality company, it was giving a problem. So then even in demand planning, also it doesn't support five, oh, five oh, days. Oh. 
ஒர்க்ரிமெண்ட் <coughs> they are not sensitive to your calendar at all <coughs> only planning module is sensitive only naha is sensitive others are not uh, for others it is not sensitive at all when naha touches it they are very very sensitive <coughs> yeah i mean it depends because the suppliers might have their own schedule exactly for example the uh, the business scenario might be that the suppliers tell that you only collect inventory only on tuesdays and thursdays so like, if you have to model that then you need to create different calendars for yeah, the yeah. different suppliers so creation of different ships and then different workday patterns and schedules are required only from a planning perspective and then we can have only one for let us say 100 orgs we can have only one all these things we can have only one your ship workday pattern should only one is sufficient for inventory go so that but i have done only one and then i implemented it it worked cool and there's no problem we go to the managed facility should be fine as a task so paste it over here and click on it so click on the hyperlink of the managed facility schedule and go that one i will click on plus now <coughs> i will now say k01 underscore facility schedule uh, sorry uh, nana is it mandatory to define facilities if for procurement like there is no use of that said procurement do not work anything on this now when you want to receive it they are all required procurement has got only two things one is what purchase requisitions and purchase orders they don't need these things but inventory needs all the things okay right? when you want to receive it you have to receive only on the inventory and not on the procurement side so go that you want to take over it and then put the description the facility schedule is getting created fine go that you want and then go for it and one guy has it is now automatically given only for one day now so one guy has forgotten to what happens to change it to for 6 years and then it will now throw an what happens a transaction processing error <clears throat> it will be it will be throwing an error now fine so receiving transaction process error it will not show when you are receiving it so make a change to 6 4 years actually so make a change otherwise it will not go you will not throw an rtp error when you are receiving it actually when you are receiving the material it will not throw so ensure that you are now giving it at least for 4 years or 5 years from today onwards 4 years Right. it by default it now give you only one day and then you have to change it for four years quality is having a very big importance only for naha fine go there and then choose one of them but if you choose the monthly or 13 periods later on we cannot implement planning at all remember for implementing a planning you have to have a four week, four five, four, four, five or four one of them right. the week week basis it has to be there otherwise later on you cannot do it so for example today i know purchase inventory and then and, uh, after four months i am purchasing planning means i am now using 13 periods planning will not work at all you cannot even change it also later so now itself you can use one of these things yeah normally i think they go for 445 right whatever it is whatever it is. yeah this 445 generally is supported by is supported yeah uh, it's okay. basically the, the standard default one which everyone chooses i believe okay okay yeah. i will not choose 44 because i don't know planning i'm choosing so some guys who are working on planning they saying normally they choose 445 we have don't have we work on 24 by 7 actually as far as our inventory is concerned we can perform it yeah. 24 by 7 Only yeah, basically, we, yeah, four four five is a universally accepted the period close process. Four four five, right? So, what is your name? I'm with Chandrasekhar here. Chandrasekhar is now saying something on this. No point. So, Chandrasekhar, have you worked on planning? 
I'm not working on so he yeah. is saying from a finance perspective that generally four four week four four five yeah. is stuff like you but close the periods you got one more guy that. Chandrasekhar fine you can also note down fine the names now fine. So click on plus number. Okay, but I'm giving a plus number. So what does this a four four five? What is the planning? Uh, let's say January one is the start date, and then on twenty eighth of January the month is ending. From twenty ninth of January month two starts for the next four weeks, and then after four weeks what happens? We will now calculate the next five weeks, and then just say so a year has got fifty two weeks, and then a quarter will be having what thirteen weeks actually. That is what it signifies because. Planning module can plan only on a week basis because the week is the only one which is repeating. Whereas month is not repeating. Fine, no other thing is repeating. So they want a repetitive period, which is only week basis. Week is the only one which is repeating. So week and month, if you see, only week. So that is why they need it. And there are so many other concepts of that. You will be learning it when you're doing it. When you, when you learn planning, they will not give a lot of concepts. They call them as a planning bucket structure. So sequence number is one and go there. I will not put K zero one and then give it a tap. My pattern will be coming. Oh, it's not coming. If it's not coming, drop down and then choose. Fine, click on search. So click on search and then search for it. So select it and click on OK. Fine, by which is not done. So my schedule is ready. <clears throat> so click on seven post. So I have completed what? Your facility ship, your workday pattern, and then the schedule. Now, while I'm doing it, what happens is now giving a warning. So we are given one to seven. Fine, something is coming as a partial. We are missing the thing. Ignore the warning. Doesn't matter. Click on S. And then ignore the warning. Oda ponga. So the warning. Yeah, if we change it to January one, it will. This will not come because it's saying that no yeah, effective yeah. date. Very correct. Yeah. What he's saying is that if the start date is first of January, this warning will not. Come. It does okay. So even if it comes, it doesn't matter at all. Inventory one, it doesn't matter. So having completed these activities, what the factory ships, and then what about the other? And then I am not going to create my inventory or. So I will now create one master org and then two child orgs. <coughs> Let me go and then create my master org and child org. So go there. So I will now keep my cursor on the manage inventory org and take copy it. And then I will now go there and then I will now create our master org. Manage inventory org with the task name and empty name. So go to the manage inventory org task name. So we are now going to create what? We yeah, are task. So go there. So click on plus now and click on plus. Mm. So I'm not going to get my master org now. So I will be getting my master org. So for my easy understanding, I'm writing master and child. In reality, you have to go and then what happens? The consult the end client and then accordingly derive the naming convention. Naming convention is very very important, and then you have to derive it properly. Now. So the naming convention is very important. That's all. I will now say K zero one and go the underscore master underscore org. And then here we can even go up to 18 characters, whereas in Eagles, you can go only for three characters. The first letter must be capital one, K01. And then I will now put zero here. Now. My convention is what? My three letter prefix followed by zero means master. One is the first child, two is the second child. So click on this and then management in the K01. If you give a tap, the business unit will be done. The business unit is having an association to zeroth location that will now automatically default. And the business unit is now having an association to zero location. You know, like, Drop down the LE, drop down the LE, and then I'm taking the and then the profits under business unit will be done. So my inventory or is reporting to this BU and then this LE now. So the master uh, is reporting to this BU and then this LE actually. No, no. Like so, here, the inventory org is mapping to the business unit. That yeah. means it is reporting to the business unit actually, financially. <laughs> okay, okay. So you will can I create the another master or for the same business unit? No, one business unit can have a maximum of only one master. Only one. Only one business, business unit. For business, per business per unit. For business unit, you are supposed to have only one master. If you have two master, the system will allow you to create, but that is disastrous actually. Okay. So, so party has got two leaders, fine. Right? Fine. The party will now go to dogs. So you can have only one neta in the party. Similarly, you, one yeah. business unit can have only one master org. You cannot have multiple master orgs below. We can have a zero master org also. We do not have even have a master org at all. That is the best practice. If you have 10 BUs, create only one master org across all the 10 BUs. That is the best recommended practice. <laughs> we'll come okay. to the 
but in the real scenario like uh, the item will be shared across uh, business yeah, across, units right? no item will be shared across the child dogs at least not the big it will be coming the yeah. attribute lower. will be taken from the child dog no child dog will not take the attribute from the master dog Margaret master dog correct yeah child but will be you can the change the uh, yeah but you can change the attribute at a child level as we will come to that a bit later mama we will not come to okay. the topic later we will not discuss so, about uh, it yeah yeah my question yeah, nana is like uh, that ledger and the legal entity and the business unit yeah. suppose if i going for the same ledger and the legal entity if i have one more business unit i can create the one more master org that is what jena every business unit can have a separate master org also every bu can have a separate master org. yeah but uh, the best recommended leg- practice is what club multiple uh, one master org for multiple bu wherever possible you club it that is the best okay. practice okay suppose i'm the legal entity i have yeah. two business units okay okay so i have two organization two master organizations yeah <laughs> okay. No. So, if I want to do any transaction, because these two people don't do any transaction, the master. Same, no transaction to the master. Master same org is nothing but a repository of item definitions, and then you will not perform the transactions only on the child account. Okay. Even if it is a come sale, uh-huh. one sale is belongs to one uh, master, uh-huh. another sale belongs to another master. So I want no, no, to no. transactions between no, no, legal no, no. entities. The child do not belong to master at all. Let us say B U one, fine. Y one, and then C one, fine is one combination. B U okay. one, Y one, and then C one. B U two, and then it is going to use the same Y one, and then it will now have C three as a R. Okay. So okay. multiple B U S can have one common master, and then every child reports to the respective B U basically. Okay. <coughs> Child no. is supporting the reference view. <coughs> master can be common across all the BUs also. Okay. Master will be the common for all business units. But child is unique. Every okay. child is unique to a BU. Uh, Since but, we don't we don't do but, any transaction at a master org, so in yeah. general in the. Uh, I will uh, come to the usage of common common <laughs> master org or BU later on. Not now. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. part I understood, but in that configuration in that setup. we are mentioning the business unit at the, we are tying basically mapping yeah. the business unit to the yeah. master org. every so org whether it's going to be a master org or child org it has to report to a bu it has to pre- report to what legal entity as well as the legal <coughs> you are discussing suppose if i want so to add another business, business unit another business unit yeah every child org will have a unique one combination only a child org will have only one bu One LE and then one LJ. You cannot have multiple. So I am not getting uh, the master. Up. It belongs to this BU. It is not going to report to this BU. This LE and then this ledger only. Uh, okay. Uh, it still so has not clear. Ah, uh, Nana, please. Sir, uh, question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, If the same. Ma- shall we discuss this point after nine fifteen? No, fine. After nine. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. To be here, okay. then after nine fifteen, I will not discuss on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sir, this one question, please. Tell me, tell me. so this master org that you have defined if it going to serve as a master org for more than one business unit okay. will we how would we set it up then i will come to that a bit later okay we are not doing it when we are doing the transactional part i will not explain you all this let us come we will gradually come fine but so click on having done this what about the click on next one click on next. i have just one question related to this yeah at setup level how we are differentiating child org and master org yeah that is the next next and next we are going to explain it. So how yeah. to distinguish? How to make yeah. it as a org, as a master org, or child org? I am going to say now. How to create an inventory org as a master org, or how to create an inventory org as a child org? I am going to explain now. That is the next step. So click on next. After having given this financial reporting, and click on next. So I am now clicking on next. And then here, what happens? We go there. <clears throat> In the next, I go on there. The next, I am going to go there. Now we are into supply chain area now. Right? We are now setting up our supply chain. Area. So, so financial setups are complete now. We are now setting up uh, BU is now complete. Now we are now setting up M one. So we are now setting the what happens the K zero one master. Of. So in this place, I go there and then I am going to put it in the same master. Same one. <laughs> Give a tap. I am giving a tap. So if this org and this org are same, it is a master. Of. If this and this are different, it is a child org. That is the way you do it. So by 
<coughs> putting this org over here, it becomes a master. And then I have no <coughs> beginning by revision with a Y now. Y revision. Because if you are going to see the revision control, I go there. Schedule, I go there. K01 on the media tab. And then locator control, I am going to use it as what? Locator control determined at sub element level. Remember, this cannot be changed later now. This has to be very important. Right? You always keep it at this level. I will now discuss about it during locator. Okay. Locator control determined at sub unit level. Choose it. And then beginning itself, whatever you make it as a manufacturing plant as well as a maintenance plant. Because sometimes what happens, it will not allow you to put a tick mark later. And that's it. Fine. The org is created. Now, this is a master org because this and this are same. So click on save and close. Let me create two child dogs. So item definition organization by default we got as a master organization. No, no, I will not copy that. So here, if you go and then see this, no fine. If you go and then see this, no fine. K01 and then make a search, no fine. Click on search is there on the right hand side. Click on edit, no fine. Click on edit. So go there. So go there. Click on next, no fine. So if I am putting this as a, this is the same point, this is the master arc. Master arc can only be a definition arc. Master arc cannot be a reference arc at all. Master arc, I will not explain what exactly the reference arc. A master arc can only be a definition arc. It cannot be a reference arc at all. So click on cancel. So let me go uh, on. Allow go. negative balances. Is I will come to that a bit later. Now. We won't do it. Negative balances will not go. Click on that. I'll be coming to that a bit later. It's a big, big topic. It's a huge topic actually. So K01 underscore child underscore one. I will now say there's a capital K011. So K010 is my master. 011 is my child. That is my convention. If you want to have a different convention, you can use it. No problem. So once I put a business unit, automatically my zeroth location will be coming. I will now make a change now. I will now make a change to one. You tap. Now you can see in the bottom address will also become one. So that has become so here. Here, can I choose the different business unit other than master? You should not. But the, the option will be provided. The option is there. Yeah. You can also marry your neighbor's wife, also. Right? But you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> right? okay. So you have to first of all define the structure clearly. How you're going to do it. And then afterwards do it. This structure has to be put on paper very clearly. Man, I'm is, uh, you will know only whatever is being given by the client or approved, only those things you will do it. Even Man, though it's exactly difference between management business unit and profit center business unit. I will come to that a bit later now. Fine. What are the business unit? What are the difference between the business unit and then the profit center business unit? I will be coming to a bit later. So drop it down. And then as of now, it's coming up immediately. Fine. I won't choose it. So the profit center business unit is coming automatically. I'll be discussing about it a bit later. No. Okay, fine. Go there. So you're not giving it fine. So click on next now. Fine. Click on next. We go to the next thing. So here I'm going to say every org will have a master. Org. This is now going to have this as a own master. Org. So this child is also will have this master. Org. This also will have the same master. Org. So when you're getting 15 organizations or 100 organizations, everything will have a common master actually. Master. Org. But the master org also is a master. The child org also is a master. I will not no, go no. What is the significance of management business unit there? Where is it? I will now come to that a bit later. No, fine. We are not to come to that. No, fine. We are not gone to the transaction level. I will not. So I don't master on this. give a tab now. So go that tab. And then I will now choose the master. Now, this org and this org are different. It is a child org. So only on a child org, the grouping behavior is applicable. I will now choose it as a definition org. And then I will now choose it as a B, revision B. So go there. I will now put my K01 and go that card. And then here, I will not make it as what? Locator control determined and subdivided level. So click on seven. So the item grouping button. behavior has second option. I will not, I will not demonstrate it. So what yeah. I will Sir, reference of item grouping. Order. Okay. Perfect. I will not, it is a definition arm. So make it as a definition arm. <clears throat> okay. Fine. Child one is a definition arm. <clears throat> so click on seven close. Oh, Nana, what about the other tabs there? Ah, we will be coming to it. We are not gone to the inventory transactions. Huh? Name will not come. So click on plus now. So go there. So go there. K01 underscore child underscore two. No, fine. Child. See the child, child underscore two. Go there. It's a capital K012. No. We got K01. And then give it up. And then I won't change it to two. No. So legal. Sir, what is this internal or external? It is employees or internal or external. 
it is only for hr or a crm actually fine we don't need it we, we, for us it's all done legal entity drop it down and then come and drop it down i will not change go to space for that is not done and go there click on next so go there so here in this place general what happens i go there i will not populate the master or nothing like that i will not choose the master or nothing like master so this and this are having the same master and like that i will not choose the definition of i will not choose the reference org a bit later now fine i will not create another reference org later now <laughs> item grouping be here is a reference org later and then i will show you as of now i am not choosing only definition okay let's see so go there is the k01 and then we tap on it will find and go back on top it down i will not choose located on the uh, this much is sufficient so we will not create the fourth org later with the reference org so click on so on first so starting division here. why are manana one question why are we giving starting division as a different for each uh, when we have go for the revision control i will be explaining it uh, so i am not having a different starting revision number i will not explain it once when you see the revision control topic okay but normally in any organization like the uh, revisions are same across the uh, wait item wait when you come to the topic we will not discuss about it when okay. you, the topic will not discuss so click on another point so click on you know that so the inventory org is not there now we have to tie the location to org is a must actually it is not there in the e business topic so we are going to suppose to tie it now fine take over so take over it and go to the manage locations and then we are going to perform a tie so we have to tie the location to org in e business what happens is your back to back process as well as your iso needs a tie whereas here everything needs a tie in e business only back to back and then iso needs a tie whereas here everything is needing a tie tie is a mandatory one in fusion actually Infusion is a mandatory one, and one location should not be used to any other org. Only one org. Select it. Zero to location and go there. I will not click on the edit and then I will not perform an update. Now, right? select it from the left hand side. Go to the edit and then perform an update. Right? Go there. We are going to tie the location to org. Right? Click on OK on this now. Right? Click on OK on this one. Click on OK. And then I am going to tie it to my master org. Zero will be tied to the master. If you don't tie it. your transactions will fail actually and you are not supposed to make a mistake on the inventory or creation also you have to put the appropriate location right the inventory or go there so k01 i will not wait for it it will not go 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 and then it will not show you and then i have not choose the master so i have not choose the master so the zero to location is not tied to the master it is a must actually remember and click on submit now it is not tied so click on yes now The zeroth location is not tied to the master. So there is no submit. The master log is a logical log. Why we are yeah. assigning location? Yeah, why we, we need to, to have a location? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is uh, preferable to lie a location. Even though we are not going to perform any transaction, it's preferable to do it now. So location one time, like now, I will not go to the select it and then edit it and then click on update now. And click on update and go to update it now. So click on OK now. Fine. I am now going to what about that? Tie the first location to the first first child org. I will go there. I will now go there. Click on inventory org. K zero one. I will now go there and put it. I will now put the child one. <coughs> child one is now done. Fine. So click on submit. Which what about that? Is now complete. Okay. And then finally the third one also. Every location must be tied. Otherwise your transactions will fail. Remember. So from org perspective, it's mandatory, right? Otherwise, we can have multiple location or few locations which are not yet tied. Yes, we can even have untied locations also. We'll be explaining it during purchasing actually. There will be locations which are not tied to an inventory org. Right. Fine. That will be explained during purchasing. So go there. But if you have an org that needs to have a definite tie, a location need not be having an association to org, but Or has to have a location. Got it? Good question. Fine. I don't know whether you understood it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it. I got it. Got it. Now, my good. They great now. Your location need not have to have a tie to org, but org need to have a tie to the location. Otherwise, it will not work at all. Location, you can even have no org tie at all. Fine. We will be having a look at it during purchasing. So click on submit. So, for example, this location is my residence, Madras residence. So I will not be. I am working in Madras. I am basically what a yeah, salesman. So I am now performing sales activity. I go to the customer's location, and then I will now canvas the product, and then I am now operating from my house actually. 
So my location need not have to have any tie to the org at all. A sales officer, right. and then an accounts officer, right. and then so many other people are there. Right. Your, <coughs> what happens? Your transportation agents, right. they will all not have any inventory org associated with it. They will come to the during purchasing. I click on this. But your org is there means what? Org has to have a tie to a location. Otherwise, it will not work. Your location need not have to have a tie to it. So it's all done up. Right? So location organization tie is now completed. Next uh, is Nana, so, yeah. Nana, so there's something called as manage in spread. Manage? While you're manage in spreadsheet while you're... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the... now done it. Fine. You have to go on and make an R&D. And then you can even put something on the spreadsheet, some 100, 200 records, and then you can upload it. You try it. I never tried it actually. Okay, okay. I'll just, uh, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll just... It. Got it, got it, Nana. Thank you. Yeah. I never done it. You make an R&D. So next stop is what? Every inventory org must have at least one sub inventories for transactions. So <clears throat> you go that you know, I will not go to the managed sub inventories. You have to have at least one sub inventory. I will not put the org name here, no, K011. On the master org, you will not create any sub inventory because you're not going to perform any transaction. So on K011 and then 12, we are going to create sub inventory. Now, click on okay. We will not be creating the sub inventory. So click on plus, no, fine. <clears throat> I will now make an RMS store. So my, the raw material stores, I'm going to make it now. Right? K011 right? underscore RMS. I will now say so capital C, RMS one. Raw material stores one. I take copy it. <coughs> put the description. <coughs> In the location, I keep my cursor and then I put K01 and then give it app. The location is becoming automatic. So we'll be discussing about it a bit later now, remaining ones. So click on save and close on this now. Right? On save and close. So by which this is the basic automatic. difference here, right, Nana? I mean, huh? in EBS, uh, we were not uh, tying location to any of the sub. Yes, yes, exactly. In EBS, we never tie at all. Only for two business yeah. processes being yeah. tied. One is what back to back uh, processing, yeah. back to back ordering, and then uh, one is what ISO. ISO needs a tie. Otherwise, it will not work. And later on, they have removed the dependency of the back to back. Back to back is also doesn't need a tie, but ISO okay. needs a tie. Fine. Internal sales order needs a tie. Whereas yet everything needs a tie. Every or needs a tie. So click on plus now. Fine. I will not go that. You know, I will not go that. K zero one one fine. underscore RMS two now. <coughs> Second hour. <order. coughs> Location is what K zero one and then give it app. <coughs> no, I mean, I click on seven close. So I have completed creation of two sub inventories on an inventory org. Remember, every inventory org has to must have at least one sub inventories for transaction. Some inventories are physical containers of material, whereas org is logical. Org is logical, whereas we can transact not on the org, but on the sub inventories only. We can perform the transactions only on the sub inventories and not on the org. So how, I will, do, we, how do we ensure that uh, the master org uh, don't have the, the transaction? If it is a master org definition. Uh, can you put a bomb in uh, Bangalore airport? Who is going to stop you? You can very well go on and put it, but it's disastrous. Similarly, in a master org also, we can create a sub inventory and then you can even perform a transaction, but it's disastrous actually. The system does not stop you performing a transaction on the master. You can do. System does not recognize a master and child. Right? Only by mentioning it, what happens? It becomes a master and child. And then you are not supposed to do any transactions on the master. So click on change org. Click on the change org. We're going to change the org. And I will not change it to second org. So second org. I can now see the org is getting changed. And so click on plus. And then I'm not going to create this sub inventory. So I'm going to go there. <coughs> the K011 and K012 now. Underscore RMS1. So K012 RMS1. Fine. Take away. I'm going to the description. So location is what? K01. If you put it automatically, the second location will come. Now. And previously, the first location came in now. Now the second location will come. If it doesn't come, you drop and choose now. It'll be coming automatically. And click on save and close. Because we already tied it. Since we had tied it, it will Click on plus one. And then I will not create the next one. Point. K012 underscore RMS underscore two. <coughs> so take copy of it and then put the description now. Description. And then here location what? K01. And then the second location will be coming automatically. So we have completed creation of the sub inventories also for the R. 
Yeah, Nana, so, so this uh, is the same like EBS only, so storage, okay. sub-inventory, receiving and yeah, storage, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, receiving and storage. Okay. Right? But receiving is controlled by Lockfire actually, not by... Okay, got it. Got it, got it. Uh, locator structure will cover later or...? Which, which, uh, locator control will be covering it later actually. <laughs> the structure, location structure, locator structure will be covering it a bit later. So it's not on. So lock not... fire whenever we have WMS, then only we'll have lock fire, right? If without lock fire, fire we cannot do yeah, it. Yeah. Only for WMS, the lock fire. Okay. So this is a logical stop, actually. Now we are going to go into the HRMS now, right? So we are now come to a logical stop. So we call it a day, actually. This is, we are now jumping into HRMS now. Human, let's see, human copy management. So we will now begin at 5 p.m. tomorrow <coughs> on the job front. Any doubts till now? Yeah. One locator also is a key flex field in fusion. Of course. Locators and account aliases are key flex fields in supply chain, actually. Supply chain has got two key flex fields. We are going to create them and then I'll show it to you. Okay, but uh, lo locator in WMS is not there, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. WMS is again a separate model. Huh? Correct. Yes, RK, you raised the hand. Tell me, you can talk to me directly. What is the cost center? Because cost center is not there at all. The cost center concept is gone in fusion. We don't have any cost center concept. We are going to see about how costing is set up in the costing setup section. We don't mention any cost center while inventory or creation. I think there's a department now. Cost center may be a department in the what I was in the financial segment actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I have a sales department. I have a, what's called service mm -hmm. department. So they are all segments in the chart of accounts. Sir. That is a different one. Uh, normally, Nana, if some items have uh, items level, do we have, whenever an item created, mm -hmm. we have to give a cost center. It is an average cost or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That is not a cost center. It is a cost method. Yes, sir, cost method. Sorry, cost methods. Yeah, we are going to do it now. Fine. We are going to see about the cost method a bit later, Nana. We'll Hello, take a look at the cost method. Cost methods a bit later. Thank you. We will not do anything on the supply chain area. Right? While right. I'm creating it, what happens even on the item side or on the inventory off side, we don't do anything on the costing. Right? Costing is again a separate setup. Hello? So there is a new costing method called layered costing. Yeah, yeah. Layered costing is there. Only one layer of costing is combined. First in, first out. The last in, first out is yet to come. There are two layered costings. One is the first thing, first order, and then one is the layered costing. And then we have one periodic costing is also available in EBIS. There is yet to come. The last thing, first order, and periodic are yet to come. They'll be coming very soon. Is so, there any no, 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 no. We will be having a no, look no. at the first thing, first order costing in this training itself. Nana, no, no, when no, no. defining uh, the inventory, so in EBS we have. Uh, uh, the questions, uh, the options related to the serial and lot on the on the yeah, yeah. Here the also definition. we have it now. We are going to see it now. We are going to see okay. all and things. accounts. Uh, there is an other no accounting except for one account now. Fine, there is only one account available. Fine, there is called a sales account. I'll be coming to it a bit later. When I create an item, I'm sure there's only one account. Okay, so we don't have any accounts defined here, right? Okay, okay got it. Yeah. We don't have any periods at all. Inventory and purchasing are not having any periods at all. Remember, only financial modules are having periods. Got it, got it. So those who are fresh, please don't worry about it. Fine, these people are asking very high level questions. And so don't get afraid upon this. No, fine. Everything will be taught to you. Whatever I say, everything will be taught to you. So that means in inventory, I can create any number of inventory organizations. No, I need not close the inventory org. There is no concept of period at all in inventory. But it doesn't mean that you can now do in your whims and fancies. No, fine. It'll be coming to it about the periods while we are discussing about costing and whatever. Right. At the but, time, but Nana sir, in EBS, there was a period in inventory, right? Yeah, yeah. Inventory and then purchasing or having periods in EBS, they don't have any periods in fusion at all. To deal with uh, monthly closing then. Huh? Yeah, closing. monthly closing, we will do. We'll now have a look at it a bit later. Not. Nana, what is the profit the center? Costing? One second, one second. The, our Abu Bakr is asking something now. Let him ask. Yeah, yeah. The, the profit center. Huh? Profit center. Profit center. We will now come to it during our uh, costing setups, actually. What is the meaning of a profit center? We will not discuss about it during costing setups. Not now. Maybe in the fourth week or fifth week, we will be coming to the topic. Long uh, way to go. Not Nana, what is the key difference between okay. child organization and uh, Sabin? Every org is basically logical in nature. We cannot receive on the org. Only on a sub-inventory, we can receive it now. 
every or the child or no no this is rinos na a small dog tell me well okay, let me complete this now so we have to have at least one sub inventory on every child dog and again the sub inventories can be even logical also right sometimes what happens we'll be using logical sub inventories and then we'll be using physical sub inventories so sub inventories can be physical as well as logical we'll be discussing about it a bit later so it is like example no. it is a big warehouse and we have three different uh, rooms there with two different three different uh, type of materials so okay one one, one room okay. is one one sub inventory okay yeah one one sub inventory we can even say right uh, three no, room you could do can be a sub inventory yeah yeah correct nana while while the inventory organization what is the difference between reference organization and definition organization we are ready to come to the topic now fine at the time at the time i will now explain you nana yeah. one quick question i didn't see uh, ivo item validation organization is we are ready to come to the topic fine ivo we may not even discuss in this training when because we cannot demonstrate it in inventory i will be demonstrating about the ivo in uh, purchasing and order management any of during uh, what happens uh, uh, pushing into purchasing i will not explain about what exactly is ivo Okay. So, so Nana, you uh, so if there were no been... periods in the inventory, ah. the costing and accrual process, what is the basis? Like which period it will go into post? See, we will be learning about it fully in the purchasing training now. Fine. So we have a concept called accrual reconciliation. Fine, everything will be discussed during purchasing. Okay. Inventory, okay. we will not be discussing about it. Fine. Attend my next training on purchasing. You'll understand. Okay. It. And uh, is that uh, transactions possible across the two business units? Of course, in uh, it is possible very much in uh, both EVs as well as QC. <clears throat> okay. That answers my question. That we can two transactions across be used. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Nana, you were tying these uh, inventory organizations to the locations. Is yeah. it mandatory only for the inventory receiving? Every inventory org must be tied to your location. Remember. If an org is not tied to your location, your transactions will fail actually. So, so transactions as an org is not true. Vice versa, the location need not be tied to your organization. No, the the, the transactions as in uh, inventory transactions will fail or uh, the purchasing the transactions. transactions will fail actually. Not the purchasing. Okay. Purchasing no, no. first of all do not have any transactions basically. Fine. You are creating a purchase requisition. You are not creating a purchase order. Fine. They do not form part of a transaction actually. Uh, it's okay. It's a document. We are now creating it now. But so we are inventory or the transactions are. But no, no. Tell me. Tell me. While while we create in the inventory or I mean the child <laughs> inventory. Yeah. We we attach the location, right? Uh, uh yeah. We are so, attaching a location while you are creating the inventory or. Tell me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why we need to tie it again? Uh, I yeah, mean from the. Good question. No fine. Beautiful question. No fine. it is a very good question in fact what happens when i attended this training in uh, the headquarters of oracle when i was oracle employee and then i was trained in the redwood shows california i asked the same question now. <laughs> that girl told me that what happens she also don't have an answer now. so it is uh, what happens it has been designed in such a fashion that what happens you had to use the same location while you are creating the inventory or apart from that you had to perform a tie also she is also saying that i don't know so i am also passing the same information to you i don't know <laughs> that's when i will i will go to yes, sir but me. good good sub inventory not is really very good now fine his question is beautiful fine so he has attacked my problem fine i don't know that answer now fine why we are now sub inventory is not required to be tied right sub inventory there is no tie at all fine. there is no okay perfect we have so, a location for the sub inventory also fine will be coming to it in purchasing fine sub inventory will also have a location now fine we'll long come to it come to, during the purchasing training not now so logical sub inventory is uh, for expense based items no 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 i will come to the logical sub inventory in order management actually what okay. do you mean by logical sub inventory i will not be explaining during order management maybe in inventory i will not touch that point in inventory yes uh, uh, drop ship drop ship orders no 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 drop ship is not a what about a drop ship will not drop it on a logical org not the logical sub inventory good question but drop ship will be dropping it on a logical org and not on logical sub inventory so logical no. sub inventory is a different concept actually we will be learning about it in order management i will not try to cover that in this training itself that is the got it now staging sub yeah, yeah i will i'll i'll cover it. so uh, while no. creating we have created the bu uh, we have used to you uh, we have created new data set right so yeah. that data uh, set has to be assigned to the user uh, if you uh, i will now come to that point a bit later now fine i will not come to that point Fine. Assigning the data sets. Fine. Go there. I will not. 
there are two types of securities are there one is a rds and then one is what data access data access is another set of security rds is another set of security <clears throat> you should not get mixed with these two things okay i thought in the assumption that this data oh, no. access been used for the uh, the uh, user lab <clears throat> data access is one set of security <clears throat> and rds is another set of security so there are two sets of securities available so rds is at the business unit level while data access is at the user level rds need not be at the business unit level even the payment terms can have rds even the locations can have an rds your job okay. locations jobs departments you are, there are so many entities are there in the rds now right? maybe maybe around more than 100 to 150 objects are there which are rds specific actually it is not a bu specific it is basically object specific actually. good questions but the youngsters will be who are no totally new they will be getting frightened don't worry about it these guys knows a lot of things and then they are asking this question after some one or two years you also will ask all these questions now don't worry right if uh, yeah, the persons who are totally new to this what happens they will be getting frightened because the last training sir 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 i thought that i am lost <laughs> don't worry fine do not get what happens uh, what happens uh, demotivated by these questions now fine it is not for your level but for your level whatever you need i am going to teach you and don't worry whatever i teach you to practice you will now become what happens very strong on the basics now fine these people are asking advanced levels fine don't worry about it that you will now gradually learn sir i have a generic question about yep. sars licensing uh, is it uh, oracle cost means charges uh, yeah, yeah, for this level or uh, See, since is like oracle business? is now meeting the sas requirement is a international requirement right sas is your software has to be sas compliant fine so my question, question is how oracle how is now pricing it now my question was how oracle charges is it depend on how many users are using for that yeah, yeah yeah It is is, nowadays they are now uh, charging on a role base also. If I am going to put an implementation consultant for one one user, you have to pay around nine hundred rupees per year actually. So likewise, they are now charging. <coughs> Fine, they are now charging by role specific also. Fine, the commercials are now changing now. Fine, day by day they are changing it. So you have to talk to the marketing team about how they are charging the end client, either role based or otherwise some other thing. Fine, SaaS compliance based, and there are so many changes which are happening now. they are taking advantage of the situation actually and then they are charging heavily they see that the industries are getting benefited heavily and then oracle is not paid that much so now they are charging more also one of my how, students told me that i cannot just like that assign a role to any user here fine if i assign it what happens it will now come under the billing now fine oracle will not bill that for you how to prevent uh, transaction happening in the ma ma master organization there is no possibility of preventing it if you don't create a sub inventory uh, that you cannot create any you cannot perform any transaction in the master okay so don't perform any transaction in the master and that is the best one and don't create any sub inventory at all in the master i'm sorry it is now getting late actually fine brother so is a good questions actually fine that is why what happens i don't want to stop the flow actually fine brother so you can continue your questions at 5 pm tomorrow i will not answer it <clears throat> good then fine i really like this group because the group has got lot of knowledgeable guys here now fine brother so they are asking they are going into in depth now fine brother so one quick question you said that one one guy is worked in the planning right i don't yeah, remember yeah. his name who is yeah. it anirban naha anirban naha okay write it in your heart now <laughs> sure thank you uh, i will suggest uh, the questions which are remain might be taken post on uh, whatsapp because it is currently in mine might be okay you can put tomorrow. it and i will now answer it now fine put it on whatsapp and then i will now answer it. so i am going to stop this now fine click on stop this shall i stop it fine anything fine and then we are now going to sit no, along no. with all no, the no. people who are having problems you, now no. fine there are many people who are having problem in accessing uh, whatsapp and then your telegram group etc etc we are going to address it now fine right? i will now go for a cup of coffee and then come back fine i will not do it you can stop the recording thank you stop it